Nellis Air Force Base Information Hotel. Time 2255. Winds calm. Visibility 1 mile in rain. Selling 500 overcast. Temperature 23. 2.20. Two Altimeter 3005. ILS runway 21 left in use. Departures on 03 left and 03 right. Acknowledge receipt of information hotel and advise aircraft type on first contact. Nellis Air Force Base Information Hotel. Time 2255. Winds calm. Visibility 1 mile in rain. Selling 500 overcast. Temperature 23. 2.20. Two Altimeter 3005. ILS runway 21 left in use. Departures on 03 left and 03 right. Tusk, check in. Acknowledge receipt of information. Stay here. Beautiful weather. Let's get the ATIS. Roger. Have you got the ATIS yet? This weather is really odd. One mile viz, low 70s and rain. Not something we typically get to see around these parts. Especially this time of year. Yeah, no kidding. I'll take it though. I've always enjoyed flying in this type of weather. I take it that you got the ATIS info then? Oh yeah, sorry, I've got it. Hey, one thing I forgot to cover before and I think we should work on to make your life easier. Let's go through work on the radio in preset mode. How does that sound? Sounds like it's going to save me a lot of knob turning. I'm in. Right on. I know you know this one from the A model, but let's refresh your memory. It's really straightforward. So, if you look at your radio panel, you'll notice that each radio has a small knob with a little window next to it. This is your preset selector knob. Okay. Now all that you need to do, and it works the exact same for each of the radios, is to set the desired frequency, select the desired channel you want to assign to it using the knob, and then press the load button. Selling 500 overcast. Temperature 23. 2.20. 2 Altimeter 3005. ILS runway 21.
Turn on the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now on. Altimeter three zero five on left in use. Acknowledge receipt. and advise aircraft type on first contact. Nellis Air Force Base Information Hotel. Time 2255. Winds calm. Visibility one mile in range. Nellis Air Force Base Information Hotel. Time 2255. Winds calm. Visibility Raj. one mile. Go ahead and push ground. 
Towing 500 over cast. And the four taxi portion of your startup checklist between your speed brake and fast checks, you'll see the spot for testing the MRFCS. Since we are going to be engaging it today, we will need to accomplish a check for it. Go ahead and proceed with your startup as you would, and when you're finished, we'll knock that out. Press with a normal startup, and we'll do the MRFC check before we taxi out, correct? Hey, friend, let me know when you got a good jet, and we'll go from there. Roger. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude.
Pete's got a good jet. Sounds pretty long, but easy enough. Chief, ready MRFCS check. Center, stand up. 
Control's clear.
Okay, yeah, it looks like I've got a full flight plan then. Good deal. I know it looks like one hell of a flight plan compared to what we're used to, but something like 10 of those waypoints are used for the approach by itself. And we'll talk more in depth about that stuff when the time comes. Raj. Let's pause here for a bit and have a quick chat about tack and navigation and stuff. We'll tie some of it into our departure plate since it makes good sense. I know we went over some of this shit early in your training, but we're going to go back through some of it and also talk about some new stuff since it's going to be up to you to navigate the jet through this soup. Ready to proceed? Yeah, man, let's do it. Right on, man. All right, on the right console, you have the TACAN operation and control panel. While you're eyeballing it, you'll see the ILS control panel just above. The TACAN panel is pretty straightforward. At the bottom of it, you'll find two channel selector switches, which you'll use to, if you guessed it, select your channel. In between them, you can see the test button. To the right of the channel selectors, we have a mode dial with five different settings. And in the upper portion, we have the channel display Sounds simple enough. Yep. Okay, so for those five selections on the mode dial, off is just that. Off. REC is receive only. If we're in receive only, we can get bearing, course deviation, and station ID only. No ranging information will be supplied. TR is transmit in receive mode. In this mode, we will get everything that we had in receive only mode and we'll add ranging information to it. When we get into doing our fence checks, we'll talk about emitters and TACAN being one of them. When we fence in, we'll want to ensure that we're not in either TR mode and actively transmitting. We also have two different air-to-air -air modes, AAREC, which is used for finding takers, and AATR, which is used for range and bearing information between two aircraft. Sound good? Yes, sir. Well, quick question. Why don't we use AA transmit receive so we also get range to the tanker? We don't want to use transmit receive because if everyone's using it, the tanker's tack end may go tango uniform. So, in an effort not to overload it, we just use receive only. If you need ranging info, you can pop it over into TR real quick, get the distance, and slide it back over into receive. Make sense? And ready to move along? For sure, for sure. Let's continue. All right, how about we go ahead and get the tack in on and have a look at the Las Vegas 4 tack at 116 X-ray. So using the left channel selector, change the first two numbers to 11, and then using the right channel selector, dial up a 6. I forgot to mention it earlier, but on the right channel selector, you'll find a bezel at the bottom of it. Turning that bezel at the bottom will change that X-ray into a Yankee. Have a go at that and then put the mode dial in position and let me know when you're ready to move on. Alright, ready to proceed with training. I forgot to mention the volume knob on the top right of the tack and panel. Turning that knob down will bring the volume of the tack and down, or you can end knob on the intercom panel over on the right console, left console. Pushing in the button turns it off, and turning it lowers or raises the volume. You can use either, it's up to you. Hang with me, I'll eventually get my shit together today. I hope so, I'm supposed to be learning from you. Yeah, on that note, going on to the NMS press that tack and button and you should see it illuminate. Verify that for me, please.
Alright, I've got TCN eliminated. Excellent. So now our HSI should be tied to the TACAM system. Have a look at the HSI and verify for me that bearing one pointer is pointed roughly at 200, 205-ish. We should also see a white line in the range indicator window on the HSI indicating that we do not have range. Yep, that's what I'm seeing. Perfect. Cool. For what we're going to be doing today, we're really just going to be concerned with flying radials and our distance from these TACAN and vortexations. On the topic of TACAN and vortexations, they're basically the same thing. TACAN's for the military and vortex is civilian VOR DME. In the A-10C, we have the ability to use both of them. On the Mormon Mesa 6 departure, we're going to be looking for the Nellis outbound 032 radial initially. Then we'll bring the distance factor into it and then transition over to a 215 inbound radial for the Mormon Mesa Vortac. I know you're aware of how to fly radials and all that, so I'm not going to beat it to death, but we'll cover some of the aspects of doing so using our HSI. Sound fair? Yeah, man, that sounds great. Let's press. The first thing to know about radials is that they are a reference from the TAC and for taxation to you, not the other way around. With that said, starting with where we're going to be picking up this departure procedure, the first thing we're going to worry about is intercepting and flying that 032 degree outbound radial from Nellis TACAN. To ensure that we've got that nailed down, we need to set our course on the HSI to 032 using the course set knob on the lower right. As we turn this, we should see the course needle spin towards 032, and you should also see the numbers change in the course selector window. Go ahead and get the course for 032 set, and give me a heads up when you're good on that. Once we see it hit 012 
indicating that we're 12 miles out from that tack in station. We're going to tune into 9-0 X-ray for Mormon Mesa on the tack in panel. Then we'll change the course on the HSI from 0 to 0 This should give us steering cues for flying inbound on that 215 radio. So we're flying 032 outbound from Nellis for 12 miles, then transitioning to a 215 inbound radial off of the Mormon Mesa Vortex. Yep, that's correct. I forgot to mention it, but since we're flying inbound on the 215 radial, we're actually setting the course on the HSI for the reciprocal of 215. 215 minus 180 gives us that 035 course. If worse comes to worse, don't forget your steer points in the flight plan. For both Synax and Mormon Mesa Vortex. Just fly to those steers and you should be good to go. One more thing on the HSI and radial stuff. Near the center of the HSI and along the intended course line, there are two little white triangles. These are your two from indicators. You'll only see one at a time and they indicate if you're flying toward or away from the station. Copy all that. It should be pretty easy, especially with it in the flight plan already. That's the goal. The approach is going to use the same skills we're doing here with the departure, but we'll be adding ILS to it also. We'll cover the approach after we've done what we need to do with the manure version and AR, and when we're ready for recovery. Cool, man. What's next? Okay, let's go ahead and get the jet set up for navigating around for today. Have a look at that Mormon Mesa departure plate. Let me know when you're ready to have a lengthy, thorough discussion about it. Let's do it. All right, so you can see this is a pretty straightforward departure, nothing too fancy, especially considering we'll be using 03 right. Looking at the plate, you can see we're going to be flying the Nellis 032 outbound radial until we're a little over 12 miles out at Zenax. Then we'll transition to intercepting and flying the Mormon Mesa 215 inbound radial towards that vortex, which is about another 30 miles. We'll need to be at Angel 19. Mormon Mesa, unless ATC tells us otherwise. I'd expect vectors into the range and turn loose from there before we get to Mormon, though. That looks easy enough. I didn't think that it much trouble. Go ahead and dial Nellis 12 X ray in his attack and operation control panel, then place the mode dial in the transmit receive or GR position. Again, Warren Mace of Vortex is going to be 9 0 X ray. So when you're getting close to approaching Zenax, go ahead and tune your attack and into that station and start looking for the intercept on 215 inbound.
Ready to press. Excellent. Go up to the HSI and get 032 plugged in as our course, since we're going to be flying that 032 radial first. Just remember, change the course on your HSI to 035, which is the reciprocal for 215, when you switch over to the Mormon Mesa Vortex. Sure. Next, going to the NMSP, depress the tack end button to put us into tack end navigation mode. Done. I've got the green triangle under TCM. Perfect, that's what we're looking for. Going back to the right console, let's look at the ILS control panel. Alright, I've got one. Well, that's good. As you can see, this panel is about as simple as it gets. We've got two radio rotary dials that we'll use to tune the freak, and they have rotating bezels. The left bezel turns it on and off, and the right one controls the volume. Again, I really don't like to be doing a bunch of shit while I'm trying to fly a fossil, so if able, I'll do it while we're on the ground. With that being said, let's go ahead and dial into Nellis ILS on 109.1, and let me know once you've done that. I've got 109.1 set in the ILS. Alright, man, go ahead and give clearance a shot when you're ready so we can get out of here. Roger, stand by. Via Mormon Mesa for departure. Expect entry through Elgin. Climb up and maintain 12,000 feet. Departure 385.4. Squawk 4031 for Tusk. Tusk 3, that's a good read back. Switch the ground 275.8 at your discretion. Good day. Ground at 275.8. See ya.
Turn off the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now off.
Sands with you at Thunder with Hotel looking for text to the active. Four two 
Information Hotel, time 2255. Winds calm. Visibility one mile in rain. Selling 500 overcast. Temperature 23. 2.20. Altimeter 3005. ILS runway 21 left in use. Departures on 03 left and 03 right. Acknowledge receipt of Information Hotel and advise aircraft type on first contact. Nellis Air Force Base. Dusk 3, 1, request startup. Dusk 3, 1, clear to attack. Dusk 3, 1, request takeoff. Dusk 3, 1, you are cleared for takeoff and ready. Climb 300 at QFE 28 decimal 16.
Departure, tough three at uh, Z-Max, Zynax, on route to Mormon Mesa. Tough three, no departure, radar contact, continue on the Mormon Mesa departure, climb and maintain Angel 20. Continue on the Mormon Mesa, climb and maintain Angels 1-8 for Tusk 3. Alright, so if you haven't already done so, dial up 0 3 5 on the SI, set the TACAN for 9 x ray and get us lined up with that 215 inbound rate.
push blackjack. Am I? Blackjack Tough 3 with you 10 miles southwest of Mormon Mesa as Frag. Tough 3, you all with Elkin and Sally on Hill 1630 local. Caution to tanker traffic to your north in Caliente Charlie and Bravo and Angel 18. Advise wind transitioning to Caliente. Cleared entry through Elkin. Blackjack Tough 3, Elkin Sally until 1630. Tankers to the north of Caliente will advise when we push north for gas and entry approved through Elkin. Back in steer point, coming left for steer three. Steer three is going to be our northeastern marker for Elgin, and steer four will be our southwesternmost point inside of the valley. As long as we stay somewhere in between, we should be okay. We're going to go up in here and get in some practice flying and manual reversion. In any event, I'll be close by and I'll keep us on it and in our assigned airspace. And hopefully, keep you out of trouble. Sounds reasonable. Happy to hear that you think so.
We're down when it violently pitches. Yeah, that don't sound like fun. No, not at all. A very important thing to remember is that pitch trim inputs will be reversed. So when you trim the nose up, it'll actually fall and vice versa. Roger. The trim functions are reversed. Exactly. One more word of advice. I know the talk drivers were used to some pretty ham-fisted throttle inputs most of the time. Smooth throttle inputs here are very important, as jet will be much more sensitive to it. In other words, if the nose starts to come up, ease back on the power. If it goes down, increase it slowly. Try to ease into those throttle inputs before they're needed so you stay ahead of the jet instead of chasing it. Understood. Anything else? Actually, yes. Because you have a strict hard deck on this one, let's quickly go over a very useful tool on your HUD, how to set up an altitude alert. Ready? Ready. Okay, press the altitude alert button on the UFC for me. It's located next to the clear and below mark. MSL floor now. Good. Type 16000 on your scratch pad and then press enter. It should change to 16,000 MSL. It has indeed. So now, whenever you get to 16,000 feet, you'll hear Betty and you'll know you're damn close to the hard deck.
Okay, I'm in position, headed towards steer four, ready to proceed. Cool man, let's do it. Just remember, if it starts getting sketchy, get out of manual reversion and into normal flight control and recover the jet. Raj, here we go. All done, Kermit. I think with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up our last and on manual version. Put her back into normal flight control and let Blackjack know we're done here in Thursday. Thanks, man. Stand by one. Blackjack test three request. Send it. Test three is wrapping things.
Greg's up down here at Elgin looking to press north for Shell. Tough three cleared into Caliente Alpha and Bravo. Shell is on station both 015-480. Advise when exiting Elgin. Cleared into Caliente Alpha and Bravo. We'll notify when we're clear of Elgin. Tough three. I copy it all. Roger.
Checks good.
take on however much fuel you need, or however much they have available for offload. When you finish getting what you need and you've disconnected, make sure you don't move out of the contact position until you've got visual confirmation that the boom is separated. Easy enough. It's been some time since I last did this though, so don't bust my balls too much if it ain't pretty. Also, how close do these folks want me to be before I make that free contact call? No problem. I expect you to get this code and have to make a few attempts at it. Just be calm, be patient, and know when to reset. And they like you to be pretty damn close for that re ready pre-contact call. Not Thunderbirds close, but like, we can almost plug you right there close. Roger. Any last minute pointers or words of advice? Always. First and foremost, get into that pre-contact position and trim, trim, trim. Set there stable, get that zero rate of closure, trim the jet and see which way it goes. Trim it some more, and see if it's still stable. If you're not trimmed, you're going to be fighting the jet to stay in a position that it don't want to be in the entire time you're on the boom. So, should I be trimming? Maybe. Lastly, if things aren't looking right, or you're struggling, Back off into the pre-contact position. Stabilize, take a breather, and re-attack when you've calmed down. Go ahead and get us heading towards the tanker, then give Shell a call and let them know when you're heading their way. Raj. Shell 1, 1, Tusk 3, 1, request rejoin. Now and then pump attack in into transmit receive and get a range on him just to see where we're at. Once you get inside the 20 miles, start looking for him. The 135 is pretty large and some of the bros can spot it that far out pretty easily on a clear day. Will do. As you remember, I'm sure, with the boom plugging in right in front of us, it does a pretty good job of blocking our view of the indexer light on the tanker's belly. It should not be too much of a problem to see one side of the light through the other, but not both of them. The next step from here is going to be you pulling into the pre-contact position. You'll want to get the jet stable, trim it out, then give Shell a call for contact. When he clears you in, very slowly, like two or three knots of overtake, pull into the contact position and stabilize. Once you're close and stable, the boom operator will fly the boom to you. Don't go chasing it around. Just focus on staying in that same relative position on the tanker.
Ready, recontact. Clear contact.
Tower just 3-1 with you, inbound on the ILS for 2-1 left. Just 3-1, passing Chris at 9,000 feet.
Tusk 3-1 is passing Rossi. Tusk 3-1, tower, wind calm. Check gear down, clear to land, runway 2-1 left. Gear down, clear to land, 2-1 left, Tusk 3-1. Altitude, altitude.
Ground Tusk 3-1 exiting 2-1 left at Alpha, looking for taxi back to Thunder. Tusk 3-1, ground. Welcome back, taxi. Alpha, Golf, Charlie for Thunder. Alpha, Golf, and Charlie, Tusk 3-1.